Good morning. My name is Steve Rennie. I am the Ren Baron, and this is my Ren Baron Learning to Fly YouTube channel. On today's video, we're going to be doing a little simulator flight from Santa Monica Airport, Kilo Sierra Mike Oscar, to L45, which is Bakersfield Municipal Airport. All right, so let's get started by putting together our flight plan, and I'm going to do that with my trusty iPad right here. First things first, I'm going to put in K, K S M O. And then L45, which is Bakersfield Municipal Airport. Okay. And now that's in there. And now that's the beginning of our flight planning process here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fly that route today on an IFR flight plan. The best way to get an IFR flight plan, the easiest way to do it is by using your iPad. And I'm going to click on the routes button or routes button, whichever you prefer right here. And you'll see that I have a number of flight plans that have been cleared previously by ATC. So I'm going to look at this one right here, LA Victor, LAX Victor 23 Garmin Lebec. That looks like a good one. So I'm going to select my route. Now that I have that route selected, I'm going to do a couple other things in preparation uh, with my iPad. I'm going to go down to this little button down here called plates and i'm going to go over here and at the top left corner is a, a little button called binders one of the great features of four flight is that they make this process of putting plates and everything together ridiculously easy so to do that they have what are called these binders so i'm going to go and add a flight binder here and the first thing that pops up as you can see right here is it gives me a couple options to add a flight binder you want to do ksmo l45 from maps so I'm going to click on the KSMO L45 maps. And so what you now have here, uh, if you see over here on the middle of that left panel, you have KSMO, the information on KSO, and it always starts with the airport information page. And then you have down here departure procedures. You also have down here approach procedures. Obviously, we're at Santa Monica. We're not going to do a, a specific departure procedure here. We'll get some a little bit of mini version of that uh, but more important we have the information here for l45 which is bakersfield it's got some approaches a gps approach and a vor approach we're going to fly the gps approach and then it also has the airport diagram for let me get click the close button it also has the airport diagram for Bakersfield Municipal, and that's going to be important for me to select. Well, there's only one runway to select, but it also tells me where Best Aviation LLC is, and that's where the fuel pumps are. Right now, with gas prices in Southern California between five fifty and six, seven, eight dollars a gallon, even getting an airport with some cheap gas is important. Just check out the the, the prices here in Southern California. You'll get what I'm talking about. Six eighty five, seven fifteen, seven nineteen, seven seventy six. That's if you're going to FBOs, and then you got to really kind of search around. And if you notice here at uh, Bakersfield Municipal. We go click on the button there and we click on FBOs and you'll see the gas is 569. A year ago, I would have never touched anything that had a five on it. Now it looks like an absolute bargain. So I'm going to take that one and that's where we're going to be heading. So there's a little bit of advanced planning on my iPad that I've tried to do on every single flight. And I recommend that you do the same as well. Now, okay, now, now that I've got a flight plan selected, I've loaded up my binders here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information I have here and I'm going to send it over to the flight section of For Flight by clicking that little button right there. I'm going to send this over to flights. And then I wind up on this section. And now I'm going to take this information. And I'm going to put it on those flight info sheets that you've seen me use many times before right here. So first things first, I'm going to put in KSMO on the top of the sheet. There's my little flight info section. The date today is 11 I'm flying from KSMO to L45, which is Bakersfield Municipal Airport. So now let's go back to the iPad here. And what I'm going to be looking for now is to fill in some of the blanks on this page over here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go click over on the info button for Santa Monica. Now I'm going to go to that info tab up here and I'm going to go and get some frequency. So now I'm going to put in ATIS, which is 119.15. I'm going to put in ground, which is 121.9 and 120.1 for our tower and will likely be 125.2 on the departure frequency here which you see SoCal approach for 
if you're leaving on 246 to 341 heading, okay? So now that I have that information for Santa Monica, I'm going to do the same thing for Bakersfield, which is L45. So I'm going to click on that info button right here. I'm going to go click on the info tab right here, and it's a Unicom there. So we're going to put in 122.8 for Bakersfield. Bakersfield approach is 12645. I'm going to just write that down here just in case I need it. The runway there is runway 16 and 34. So I'm going to go down to my sheet 16 and 34. I'm going to write down here in the approach section of my flight info sheets. I have another section above it called the en route where I'll put in notes that, along the way and our departure information, which I've just put in there for our frequencies. Okay, so now I have all that information. Now, let's go back to our iPad again. Takeoff briefing. It's an important part of the whole process for you to get that last handle on what's supposed to be happening as you take off. Okay. So it's Anna Monica Airport. I'm going to get back down to my my flight info sheet. There's one here called my takeoff briefing. Now the elevation in Santa Monica is 170 feet. 600 feet above that is our CAPS available altitude, which will be 770 feet today. And 2,000 feet above that is our best CAPS, and that is 2170. And I put those right here on my takeoff briefing sheet. Now that I have that bit of information, I'm going to go and look for one more piece of information here. And before I do that, though, I'm going to have to fill in a couple of blanks. Uh, I am not 165 pounds. I wish I was, but I'm not. So I'm going to go fill in a couple of blanks here, 190 pounds. That is going to help me calculate my takeoff distance and takeoff roll. So cargo is going to be minimal. I've got uh, 50 gallons on board here. So I'm going to put that in there and that's going to help me with my weight calculation. And now I'm going to come back up to the top here and I'm going to click this takeoff button, which is going to give me my, my important takeoff briefing information, including the weather, not the identifier. Okay. So as you can see right here, our weight is 2,958 pounds calculated off of the weight that's already been established for my plane plus the fuel and passengers and so forth. So it gives me a little summary at the top. Our total distance to take off is going to be 889 feet. All right. So our usable length on the runway is 3,500 feet. Now I know that at Santa Monica, but in a lot of these airports, I don't know what it is at uh, Bakersfield, but I'll, I'll be able to get that information. Now there's some weather information listed here <laughs> under the weather and the wind direction is 250 at eight knots. Temperature there is 72 degrees. I'm going to put that down here. All of this is going down here on my takeoff briefing sheet here. Our altimeter is 3009. So I'm going to put our altimeter 3009 on my sheet. Our sky condition is clear at the moment. So I'll put that on there as well. And we're going to be taking off on runway 21. Okay. We're going to be doing a normal takeoff on one. Okay, all of that information goes right here on my takeoff briefing page, which you've seen me reference a million times. Okay, now the important stuff here. We're going to go down to performance, okay? And this is the important stuff. Our ground roll is going to be 565 feet. To get to 50 feet off the ground was going to be 889 feet. So that means we should be off the runway pretty quick. That means if I'm not off the runway in that first 25 30 percent i'm going to kill the power hit the brakes and abort the takeoff so that's all the important information i need right there and then i'll go back one more time and i can get some other not so important information but it's good for the passengers which is the time and route which is 35 minutes we're going to be flying at 10,000 feet our direction of departure is going to be runway heading and as it says right here we are going to use uh, about 800 900 feet of that runway okay so now i have all that information i need right there and now we're we're all all set to go. We're not all the way done yet. You see down at the bottom right corner here, it says proceed to file. Now in the normal case in a real flight here, I would click on that proceed to file button and it would send that information up to the FAA. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. So let me show you how I use Pilot Edge, which is a plugin for X-Plane that gives you ATC in a box, we'll call it, and makes the whole flight simming experience very real, particularly true if you're an IFR pilot. If if you're just getting started flying, uh, I recall when I was just getting started, I was intimidated a little bit talking to ATC. I, I would often garble my words. I know I can hear somebody out there right now going, you still garble your words, Steve. And that's true. But I have a much better idea of what's going on. And the reason is because I've spent a lot of time talking to AC, ATC now. And Pilot Edge is a great way for you guys to do that. So let me go ahead and 
pull up Pilot Edge now. All right, now, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and sign in on Pilot Edge, piloteDge.net. All right, it knows who I am because I've done this a million times. So I'm just going to go click Sign In. And now I'm signed in. And so now I'm going to go and click this button called File Flight Plan. This is going to be our simulator version of filing that plan, flight plan with ATC. Let's start over on the left. It's an IFR flight. My tail number is 768 Foxtrot Sierra. My plane is an SR-22. My equipment code is Slant Golf. Uh, my true airspeed is 175 knots. We're leaving out of Santa Monica. We're arriving at, now this is going to be one of the few times I actually use my uh, keyboard over here. So I'm going to type in L45, L45. And I am now going to just go ahead and tab across to the next one here. Our cruising altitude is going to be 10,000 feet. I'm actually using the keyboard to do that today. I'm not going to worry about an alternate airport right now. So now i got to put in my route. So let's go back to that iPad for just a second. Let's go up to Maps here. And here's our route uh, that we're going to enter in right here on the Pilot Edge. So I'm just going to look at that one and put it in over here so you can see it. So uh, our first one is KSMO. We don't have to put in the beginning or the end, the, 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 the departure airport or the destination airport. But in between, we'll need to put, and again, I'm going to go back over here to LAX on the keyboard here. Okay. LAX, space bar, and then we want Victor 23, space, Gorman, GMN, GMN, Gorman, then Lebec, L E B E C, space, and it matches the iPad right here. And now I can just go click this File Flight Plan button. And now our flight plan is successfully filed. So there's our flight plan. We've got our plates. We've got our flight plan filed on Pilot Edge. And now we are ready to go into the cockpit here. So now I'm going to go click on X-Plane here. I can't really see it, but I'm going to click on my X-Plane icon, and it's going to load X-Plane for me. Go. Okay, so now I've clicked X-Plane, and it takes me, <clears throat> excuse me, to this screen right here where we're going to go ahead and load up the flight. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go click on the new flight button here. I'm going to select my airplane, which is my Cirrus SR-22 Turbo Normalized version right here. I'm going to put in my airport where I'm starting, which is KS. M O, which I'm entering on my keyboard over here. Once I have the airport selected, I'm going to go and click this button up here called Customize, and that is going to give me a chance to decide where on the field I'm going to be starting at. So I'm going to be starting at the a, uh, Alpha 2 run up here, so I'm going to confirm that. The weather, we're going to match the real world conditions, and uh, let's go ahead and make believe we're leaving at, at 9 o'clock in the morning. So there's 9 o'clock. So now we've set, and now we're all set. So now, once I have all those options selected, Selected, I'm going to go ahead and click on the start flight and then it's going to load this baby. Okay, now that can sometimes take a minute, but now we're in the cockpit and so now we're going to get started with our flight. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the keys in the ignition where they're very hard to cockpit. Um, to help you guys visualize what we're doing today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've got a different look I'm going to show you today and hopefully you will like it. Right now you get a chance to look over my shoulder and see just exactly what I'm doing here on my flight sim setup here in the office. As I mentioned, one of the things I'm going to do is I filled out some of the information here on our flight info sheet. We're going to start by going over to the glove box here. Let's open that baby up. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our Hobbs and our engine hour. So our Hobbs is 603.1. And I'm going to write that here on my flight info sheet. Our engine hours is 373.9, and I'm going to write that right here at the top of my flight info sheet. There's one more item at the top. There's fuel on board, and we'll get that in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and close up the glove compartment. Let's uh, come back up top. We've got all that information together. Now let's go ahead and get this baby started up. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on battery number two. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go click on battery one. And now you'll notice right here that I've got the green light is on now. That comes on when you hit battery two. Our screens are all working now here, so I'm going to go click through the Cirrus Perspective screens, enter, enter, enter. We've got 32 gallons. That's enough gas to get us to Bakersfield. We're going there to get some gas, so uh, that'll work out just fine. First, let's go put on our strobe lights so everybody knows we're getting ready to go. Now, first things first, we're going to click the uh, we're going to shove this mixture all the way forward. I'm going to push forward on the throttle as well. And there's two 
boost pump options down here. One is the high boost prime, and the other is just regular old boost for a call. We're going to start with four seconds of high boost prime and listen for that unmistakable whine that happens when you push this button right now. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four. And now that we've got that done, we're going to go pull our power back all the way, and then I'm going to push it forward about one half inch, which usually does the trick for me. I'm then going to go over to my ignition switch, which you can see right here. I've set it over to both, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here, and I'm going to push on the regular old boost for two seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, and then I'm going to start this baby up. See if we can get her started. There we go. Now back to booth uh, both, and now we'll just pull our power back a little bit right here. And then we're going to put on our Alt One, Alt Two. Okay, okay. So now we've got the engine started up here. One of the first things I want to do is I want to enable our Pilot Edge ATC in a box. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come over here to this Plugins option up at the top, pull down to Pilot Edge, which is one of the plugins we're going to use, and we're going to click on Connect. And it'll ask me to sign in here, so I'm going to connect. Okay, now we've got some Pilot Edge happening there. We're going to come down here to COM2. We're looking at COM2, so I'm going to push this button up top here to switch this down, and I'm going to push over 11915, which is our ATIS information for Santa Monica. And now I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go monitor COM2. Santa Monica, All right, let's listen to our ATIS. ATIS information, Mike. One, nine, or five, one, Zulu. Wind two, zero, zero at six. Visibility 1 0. Sky condition clear. Temperature 2 1. Dew point 0. Altimeter 3007. Arriving and departing runway 2 1. Visual approaches in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on. Okay, now we have our ATIS for Santa Monica, so I'm going to turn him down right now. Okay, so now that we've got that set, I want to go up top here and enter a couple of frequencies. I'm going to put in 120.1. I'm going to put that in on the top for tower. And there it is. I'm going to switch that over. And 125.2 is going to be our departure frequency. Okay, so now we're all set there. We're on 121.9. That's also the clearance delivery for Santa Monica Airport. Okay, now we're going to go out and uh, request our flight plan from uh, ground, which is 121.9. Let's give it a go. Santa Monica Ground, Sierra 768, Fox Rot Sierra, with information Mike at the Alpha 5 run-up, or Alpha 2, that is. Can I get pick up an IFR flight plan to Lima 45, Bakersfield Municipal? Okay, uh, we're cleared to the Lima 45 Airport on departure. We'll fly runway heading at the LAX 315 radio. We'll make a right turn heading 250, then radar vectors for Los Angeles. Then as file 3000 to start, 10,010, 125.2 on the departure, 4507 on the squawk, 8 Fox Trot Sierra. Sierra, 8 Fox Trot Sierra, correct? Thank you. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get that baby programmed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the transponder button, and I'm going to push in 4507. We've got 125.2 already set up top, so those are good. I'm going to go to my altitude select button, and I'm going to put in 3000 is our initial altitude, which you can see right up here. There's our squawk code. Now we uh, want a heading of 250, so I'm going to go sync my heading right here and roll it over to 250. And now we've got that set, so I'm going to check that off my list. And we still have one more thing to do, and we're going to do it through the flight plan. So let's go over to the flight plan here. Let's go back. Flight plan, and now we're going to put a KSMO, L-A-X, enter, enter. We want Victor 23, so we're going to click on the menu button here. 
we're going to go load an airway. We're going to roll down to Victor 23. We're going to roll down to the transition, which is Gorman. And we're going to load that baby. And then we're going to go down just one space below Gorman. L, E, B, E, C. Enter, enter. And now we've got Lebec. And then finally, Lima 4, 5, for Bakersfield Muni. Okay, now there's our flight plan. Here's what we're going to do to handle that OBS uh, intercepting that LAX315 radial. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to LAX and we're going to go make that the active leg. Now you'll notice over here now we're going to look over here on the on the PFD, and you'll see we've got LAX tag. Now, it's a little quirk in X plane. What I've learned is if I just go activate leg again, it goes to KSMO LAX. Okay, that's all good. Now we're going to come back over here on the on the PFD, and I'm going to go push the OBS button down here. And now we're going to go to the course button right here, and then I'm going to go type dial in three one five which you can see right here. So I'm going to dial that in, 315. And that is our radial for LAX that we want to intercept. Now, interest of full disclosure, and the real departure procedure from Santa Monica, it's no longer fly to the radial. It's fly to 1,000 feet and then make a right turn heading 250. That's our flight plan and we are all set now and now it's time to call up and get our taxi clearance. 121.9 is active as you can see right up here. I'm pointing to it and now let's give them a call. Santa Monica Ground Sierra 768 Foxtrot Sierra at Northwest Parking with Mike. I'd like to taxi to the Alpha 5 run up. Taxi to Midsville, run up via Alpha. Alpha 5, run up via Alpha, 8 Fox Trot Sierra, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to take off my parking brake. I'm going to go to my checklist, and let's just scoot ahead on the checklist here. I missed a couple of these. We've always started the engine, and we're going to go to our taxi checklist now. So our parking brake is now disengaged. Get her out on the runway here and take care of some of our checklist here. Okay, we got some brakes there. You can see them tipping. HSI orientation is good. Our attitude gyro is good. We got three zero up top. We got three zero ish Our coming up. Enter, enter. Turn coordinator we've got here a little bit to the right. There it is, and a little bit to the left. You see the pink movement there. That's all good. So now we've got all that set. So now we've got for takeoff. Okay, our doors are latched and closed. Let's pay attention here, Steve. We're getting going a little fast there. Uh, Seatbelt and shoulder harnesses are secure. Air conditioning, we're not going to need it today. Our fuel quantity is uh, low-ish, but we're on the right, uh, the left. Let's go to our right tank now. Fuel pump is good. Mixture is full. Flaps are 50. Let's put 50 on. Let's do a quick check. Flaps are down. Transponder is set, and that is 4507, as you can see right there. Keep it going here. Uh, transponder set. Autopilot, we're going to test the rest of that up here in the run-up. Now, I'm going to post two videos. One of my simulator flight today up to L45 and then tomorrow I'm going to go out and actually fly in the real 768 Foxtrot Sierra this very same route. We're going to put the two together so you can get an idea of what uh, it looks like on the simulator, simulator and what it looks like in the real world here. One of the things you're going to find is that when it comes to the engine numbers here on this Torque Sim Aviation SR22 model, they're remarkably consistent with uh, the actual plane itself, which is terrific when you're looking to do something to make it as real as you can. Okay, I'm going to pull back my throttle a little bit here now. We're going to swing this baby around by sticking my left toe in there a little bit. Let's come back up here so you can see what's going on. 
full screen here. Okay, now I'm going to come back down to the GCU here. I'm going to go pull out my brake here real quick. Now we're good. Let's come back up top. And now we're going to go through our engine checks here. Okay, first things first, we're going to test the autopilot. We've got the heading over here on about 250. If I click on autopilot, Let's put it in heading mode first, okay? It's already turning to the left. A little bit of quirk on, on a real plane. It would wait till you've actually turned to that. We're going to call that a good check there, get rid of heading mode. And what I am going to do is I'm going to go click uh, on this. If you look down here on the throttle, underneath the throttle handle is the little takeoff go around button. So I'm going to push that right now. That gives me about seven and a half degrees of pitch, which gets me about 120 knots. Uh, on my real series here. Okay, autopilot, we've tested and connected it. Our navigation radios are set. We've got 125.2 up top, 120.1. Those are all good. Our cabin heat frost, not necessary today. We're holding our brakes down, so now we're going to go to our engine page, and we're going to spool this baby up to 1700 right here. Keep your eyes right here. We're going for 1700. Right, let's get her up there. Come on. Number two zero eight, call, call, Los Angeles Center, one, three, five, All right, there's 1700 ish. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and test our our switches and so forth. Okay, what we're looking for is some movement over here on this electrical current. So I'll get my head out of the way. Let's go this way. Okay, so uh, we're going to click the nav button. We don't see much movement there if we put our strobe. We click on the landing lights and it moves it up a little bit. Ice. Might push a little bit further. It does not. Pedo heat will blow up alternator two, and it does. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our um, ignition switch, and we're going to test our magnetos. Okay, first we're going to start with the left. What we're looking for is a drop on the RPMs in the rising EGTs. Let's go left. We got a drop of about 70, 80 ish, and you see our EGTs are rising, so let's reset it. Now we're going to go over to the right mag, and we got a drop of about 40. I like that better. EGTs are rising. I'm going to go back to both, and then I'm going to go pull my power back to about 1160-ish, okay? And, uh, and then we're going to go back to the home button here. We're going to click on the checklist again, and I'm going to go through that checklist. Okay, alternator is good. Pedo heat's good. Let's get rid of pedo heat. Let's get rid of ice. Landing lights are off. Voltage, which is right here, is about showing no voltage. On my plane, it would be plus two, plus three. Pedo heat's not required. Navigation lights are not required. Landing lights we're going to keep on. We've checked our magnetos. Our engine parameters are green. Green, 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 green. We love seeing the green. I'm going to move my... We're on our right tank here. Okay, so that's all good. Power levers at 1,000. We'll call it 1,000. Flight instruments, check and set. We've got our 3,000. We've got our takeoff go around button set. Our flight controls are free and correct. Let's go take a look outside here. In our rear view, let's zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. Okay, left aileron is up, right aileron is down. Right aileron is up, left is down. Elevator's moving, rudder's moving freely. All good there. So that's all good. Let's key, let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Actually, let's go with this one here so you can see. Flight controls are good. Trim, let's set our trim for takeoff now. We're going to go down here and we're going to pull that button back. So it's just between the T and the O. I'm going to look out on my wing. If you'll notice, you can see the aileron going up, so I'm going to adjust it so they're about level. That looks pretty good. Trim is set. Autopilot is disconnected. And now we're ready to do a normal takeoff, which I know how to do, so I'm just going to switch to our climb checklist, which is right here. And then we're going to go back to uh, the flight plan here. All right, so now we're all set. Um, our takeoff briefing here, our elevation here at Santa Monica is 170 feet. Our CAPS available altitude is 600 above that, which is 770 feet. Okay, 2,000 feet is our best CAPS in there, and that's uh, 2,000 feet above ground level. That would be 2170 today. So if we have an engine issue on the runway prior to rotation, we're going to pull the plop, 
pull the power, hit the brakes, and abort the takeoff. If we have an engine issue between 170 and 770, I'm going to pitch for 92, mixer off, tanks off, ignition, ignition off, and land straight ahead on this golf course off the runway. If we have an engine issue between 770 and 2170, I'm going to pull the parachute, mixture off, tanks off, ignition off, and we're going to float on that golf course. Uh, that is our takeoff briefing. We'll be going out on runway 21. I'm going to use about 1,100 feet to get off the ground to 50 feet, and now we are ready to go. So let's go taxi out. I'm going to go down, re release my brake, come back up top, and let's go and uh, let's start taxiing here. In the meantime, I'm going to switch over to COM1 now. Alrighty, let's go uh, <clears throat> tilt it up a little bit here. Okay, so that's our look out the front window here. Let's take a little look to the left here. We're at runway 21, Alpha 5. So let's just uh, rotate right here and get her back on the line here. Let's go up just a little bit. Alrighty. On, uh, we're on COM 1 now. Let's go. Santa Monica Tower, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra. Uh, at holding short runway 21 at Alpha 5, ready for departure. No. No. No.